So you're back from the from, from the the world premiere of Rowdy. I mean, just share with us, if you will, your feelings. What was it like? It was an amazing experience because I'm watching it with my wife, and I uh, I kind of whispered to her in, midway through. I said, I really should be dead, you know, for something like this. That so many people say so many nice things, and uh, it, usually you watch this after people have passed on so it's it, 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 it was a you know with all sincerity it was a, it was a humbling moment for me because there were a lot of really cool people on the screen I mean from Charles Barkley to Michael Phelps to you know a lot of really good friends of mine uh, and and fellow uh, swimmers saying really nice things and uh, I was very touched about it, and, and Hannah Storm, who produced and directed, she did such an amazing job. Really, just I think it was like really a cool documentary. We've talked before, and I know you always get at least a little emotional when you talk about Richard Quick, who was your coach at Auburn, your Olympic coach, yeah. uh, diagnosed with incurable brain cancer in December of 2008, and was dead in in, in six months. Uh, uh, was he in the film? Was there any reference to him? Yeah, he, he's really central to the story, uh, Mark. He, you know, he was, a, he was a huge influence on my life. And um, I, I think that was something that I certainly communicated to Hannah and her team early on that when they sat down to some of the pre-interviews and everything that he was a big part of who I am today. And uh, such a, just, such a, a, a giant of a man that he made such an impact on so many people. But it, it really boiled down to very simplistic terms. I could not have done what I did without him. I mean, it, it, it's so true. I, I literally could not have won those races. I could not have been the person I am today without his love and support. So yeah, he was a big part of it. And it was, uh, you know, I think about him all the time still. He's, he's, uh, he's really part of who I am today. I think a lot of people who have read your story know that you won three gold medals and you gave all of them away. And uh, as I've seen it quoted many times, I gave one to my mom, to my dad, and my coach. Richard Quick is the coach. Yeah, and again, that boils down to the three people that, you know, have meant so much to me leading up to those Olympic Games. My mom and dad were completely supportive, just like a typical mom and dad are with their children. Um, and they were always kind of in the behind the scenes look. But, you know, when I first went to Auburn, I did not swim for Richard. He came in after Eddie Reese, who was my coach my freshman year. He went to Texas and then Richard came in and I was with him the last seven years or so. So for me, um, that seven-year journey was about us doing it together, and, and including the boycott and how I was able to overcome that, and that was really through his inspiration and his words and his actions. And, um, you know, by the time we got to 84 and I got to that race, I knew I was perfectly prepared. I wasn't sure I was going to win, but I knew that he had perfectly prepared me both mentally and physically for that race. So for me, it was a slam dunk to give him one of those gold medals because as I said, I couldn't have done it without him. How was it told in, in, in terms of structure and, and, and the story? Are you pleased with the way that it was put together? I knew all, all these people were going to be interviewed, Mark, but I had no idea that the, just the incredibly nice things they said. I. I no false sense of modesty. Modesty. It was really undeserved. You know, I, I, I'm not that big of a deal. And for them to say those nice things was was great. And and just the ability to do what they did with with knowing that they had a budget. You know, there is a budget to everything, right? And it's like fifty thousand dollars a minute to get Olympic footage. They got 60 seconds of Olympic footage, but it felt like 10 minutes. The way they were able to do things and mixing the audio and the video and still pictures and everything, it, it literally looked like they did, 
10 minutes of my races because after the film, I even asked him, I go, how'd you get 10 minutes? I thought it was like $50,000 a minute. She goes, that was one minute of total time that you were on video. So it was, it was, it was pretty cool. Obviously, uh, you were familiar with the story. Uh, you, li you lived it. Uh, is it true you had not seen a second of the film before you saw it screened in the premiere? I had literally not even seen a still picture much less any kind of teaser or trailer, nothing. Um, and I think obviously they had done that on purpose because they really wanted to see my face and be with me when, uh, when, when we did the premiere, the showing. And uh, because I had, um, I had my wife on one side and I had Hannah on the other side. And uh, you know they both were kind of looking at me as I'm watching the film. I, Dan, Dan Hicks, my longtime partner, was on the other side. And, it was really, it was great. And we had a little Q&A afterwards with Hannah, and I felt like a movie star. And like you say, you're not dead yet. Um, no. Uh, you're, you're a relatively young man. Was, it, was there a moral to the story? I mean, how does it end? I mean, is there, is there, is, is there a message that viewers would take away and say, uh, you know, Rowdy's, Rowdy's got something left? It's a little awkward for me to talk about it because it's about me, but I think the message is, um, I guess it sounds a little cliche-ish, but it, it, you should never give up on your dreams because I was kind of living proof of that as you go through the movie because I, I didn't start until I was late. I failed in five sports before I started swimming. I, uh, from a very small town, there wasn't a lot of big time swimming in Winter Haven, Florida. I, I had to boycott. Um, they talked a little bit about my sickness, my illness of Guillain-Barre, and, and so uh, these kinds of things all wrapped into the story of, you know, staying dedicated to your goal, whatever that goal may be. And I think our lives are full of these peaks and valleys that we go through, this roller coaster ride through life. And I think it just talks about trying to live through the valleys uh, to get to the peaks. It's without sounding too cliche-ish again. It, it, was, it was really about that. You're not going to enjoy this, this list of things I'm about to say, <laughs> uh, knowing you. Um, but, you know, obviously already a member of the International Swimming Hall of Fame, three-time Olympic gold medalist, multiple Masters world record holder. In the past few years alone, you've been named uh, one of the 30 most influential people in the history of swimming, which is a pretty tough list to crack. Uh, you're the, the object, the subject uh, of a book, Rowdy Rising. You're now the subject of a documentary film, Rowdy. Uh, you've been signed by NBC to broadcast your eighth consecutive Olympics. You'll team with Dan Hicks, as you noted, uh, the longest running broadcast team now in U.S. Olympic history. Uh, you know, you really could just go on and on and on. Uh, what's it like to be you? <laughs> You know, it's, it's, you know, in all honesty, Mark, I, I have to pinch myself sometimes because of the great life that I feel like I've had up to this point and I continue to have. Um, I have an incredible family. You know, my wife is my rock. I have four beautiful girls. I have three beautiful granddaughters. I, my whole life has revolved around these daughters and granddaughters. And, uh, but it's not all rosy. I mean, I, I, I suffer sometimes, you know, we all, you know, we, we have these, these good days and bad days and I have, I have both, you know, but I tell you overall, I am, I am one blessed person. I can't be believe the blessings that have been bestowed upon my life. It's, 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 it's too good to be true. So if it all ended tomorrow, I can definitely say that uh, I've lived a good life, even though it's 59 years young. And I think that it's generally accepted that you are the voice of swimming. Uh, and I think almost generally as accepted that you are the uh, international ambassador of swimming, which could feel like a heavy weight to carry, but uh, you obviously love swimming so much that it doesn't seem to be a burden. I do love swimming. I mean, people ask me all the time, if you could pick one reason why you won a gold medal in the Olympics, what would be that one main reason? And I always tell them, really, it's because I love swimming. 
I love to swim. I've always loved to swim. I've always had a passion for being in the water. I'm more comfortable in the water than I am on land. Uh, and I think that translates when I'm in, in the broadcasting booth. I, there's a boatload of people that know a lot more about the sport from the mechanics and the technical side than I do. There really is. Okay, your bar. Now, Rowdy James leading off in lane five. But I don't think anybody loves swimming more than I do. So I think that's a big part of it. And I think, you know, you talk about ambassador. I, there are so many incredible ambassadors to our sport. But I do know that I'm really passionate about being safer in the water um, and, and for children to take swim lessons. Um, it breaks my heart when I see a child drown or when I hear about a child drowning because I know how unnecessary it is. And uh, it's a tragedy that I felt like we've all along have found the cure for and it's swim lessons. And uh, I just try to, try to hit the road and make sure that that's, that's a platform that I hope will be on my, my gravestone. You know, If it says Rowdy Gaines dash swimmer, I'm okay with that. I hope it's a lot more that says, you know, good father, good husband, good son, good friend, and somebody that wants everybody to take swim lessons. <laughs> Final question. So you've, we got the book, we got the documentary. I mean, sooner or later, we're gonna have to have the feature film, the biopic. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, That's not happening. When they, when they have it, I'm gonna audition for the older Rowdy Games. <laughs> uh, uh, who, who do you see, who, do you, who would you like to see play you in a- You in a, would be my perfect person but 10 years younger <laughs> <laughs> i wish you look a lot younger than i do my brother no um, no, no who do you think who do you think could play you i mean swimming ability aside gotta be, I mean, it's got to be you know brad pitt maybe or somebody like that you know um no i shoot i don't know i i that's not gonna happen dude it's not gonna happen <laughs> That, that's, that's out the window. Um, but uh, listen, this documentary was way overboard anyway. So I, uh, but it, you know, the, the fun thing about the documentary I, I failed to mention was the fact that I think it'll be a great thing for my grandchildren and their children and their children to see because it does kind of epitomize my story, at least before the Olympics. And, um, and, and I think they'll get a sense of, of who I was uh, before 1984.